Okay, I'd like to talk about Rapid Set uh, Stucco Patch. Uh, it has Rapid Set Cement in it. It's got a 16, 20-grit sand, and that's described in the size of the sand grains. It's also got a polymer that makes it nice and sticky and easy to work with. Uh, this product here, you can, you can patch uh, you can go, uh, a half inch to two inches deep, one layer. You don't need to do, you don't need to do multiple layers. Also, you can do hairline cracks, uh, full, full thickness repairs without needing to uh, do multiple coats. Uh, this, this product also is uh, ready to paint in two hours. It hydrates extremely fast, so um, uh, you can quickly get on, quickly get on the job, and get off the job. Uh, it's easy to mix up. You just use uh, uh, four parts powder, one part water. Also, instruction-wise, we have uh, English on one side of our box, and we have Spanish on the other. Also, our direction, same thing. And if you speak neither language, we have the nice pictures here, so we have something for everybody. Comes in uh, two-pound boxes. Also comes in a nice nine pound box. We have a heavy duty a plastic liner inside the box with a twisty on it to help keep your product fresh. A 25 pound uh, bag also has the plastic inside and also a nice 50 pound bag for the larger jobs. Also, really quick, I want to touch on the working time, 20 minutes. All the times I talk about are, is at 70 degrees. So that's where the wall 70 degrees, the powder 70 degrees, and the water 70 degrees. So you have some control over that time. If it's a hot day, make sure you're running the hose to make sure you have nice cool water because if you have hot water on a hose, it's gonna cut down your working time. Now you only have five minutes working time on a really hot day. So if it's, if it's 90 or so, work in the morning. Also in the winter time, if it's cold and you wanna speed things up, use warm water to speed up the working time. So we have an adjustable working time. So first thing we need to do is uh, prep the surface. Uh, the best way to do that is, I get a scrub brush, a nice uh, deck brush like this, get a little bit wet, and you wanna scrub the clean surface off. You want to make sure there's no loose paints, no oil, no grease, no chalkiness. Uh, same rules that apply for painting, because if the paint's not sticky, then I'm not going to stick either. So break away at least any loose stucco material. Uh, if it's a hot day, uh, like 95 degrees or warmer, you want to get a, a sponge and just dampen the repair area here. So, so just dampen the area here. So first step is, we're going to get the, the stucco patch and mix it up. And usually I'll look at the, uh, the hole there and try and gauge how much, how much material I need. And I always put the water in first. And the reason you put the water in first is if you put the powder in first, then what happens is you get all the powder clumping around the edges and uh, it's not gonna mix very well. I got the water in the bucket, now I'm gonna put the material in, mix it up. You can hand mix or you can, you can machine mix with a, uh, a, like a paint mixer and a drill. I'm just gonna hand mix, I find that easier. We, our cement is ground up twice as fine as Portland, so it makes it a nice sticky mix. We also have the polymer in here. And again, the polymer makes it nice and creamy, easy to work with. I do my consistency test like that. See? Now you can do two inches on an overhead too without slumping and falling on your head. Now if you mix up per instructions, it won't land on your head. So if it lands on your head, that means you need to uh, mix it up a little bit stiffer. Okay, so we have a nice, nice creamy consistency. Real, real fun to work with this product here. You, see, you saw it didn't take long to mix it. I remember you have 20 minutes working time at 70 degrees. We've got the surface prepped. So first step is you want to key it in. Key it into the edges. You want to get it into all the cracks. So we have really good adhesion. If it's a warm day, we've dampened the area lightly here. So we key it in. So go around the edges, make sure you make a good contact, really key it in there. That's a, a very important step. This ensures that you get a good, a good grip on the, on the substrate. Okay. Go around the edges and key it in. nice and jagged. Don't cut, don't cut it square. It really helps to hide, hide the repair when it's nice and jagged. Okay. Now you squeeze it off flat. Now if you mix it up too thin and it gets a little belly in the bottom because you, you, you mix it up a little bit thin, you get, you get the belly forming, I just wait about five minutes and then just push it back in. It sets up really quick. So not a big deal if you mix it up too loose. Okay, now we squeeze it off. Now the next step is we need to bring out the texture in it. So 
So here, this is a, a, a sand finish you'll find on a lot of buildings. So to match that texture, what I do is, I'll get a red rubber float here, and I have it soaked in the water. I want to get rid of most of the water, so I get rid of the excess water. I don't want any dripping water, because if you have excess water here, and you're going to put excess water in your, in your patch, and that's going to weaken it. So if you want to get most of the water out. Now you want to do it backhanded because you, you just want gentle pressure because we're bringing the sand up. Here we go, just a round circular motion, nice and gentle. By holding it backhanded, it forces you to be gentle on it. And you're just bringing the sand up to the surface, blending it out. Like so. Like that. And then you just wait uh, like two hours and then paint. And remember, 99% of the water is going to stay right here. It's not going to come out, so we're not going to shrink in. Also, by an hour and a half to two hours, the pH is going to drop, so it'll be below 10, which most paint manufacturers say it's safe to use a latex primer and paint on that. So just use a high-quality latex primer and then a high-quality latex paint when you're finishing it off. So anytime after two hours, go ahead and paint it. Uh, here's a simulated hairline crack. Now, usually for hairline cracks, we recommend you open up a quarter inch, and that's because the stucco the stucco has the, the, the gritty sand in it, so you need to be able to get that sand into the crack. But I did learn this, uh, this trick that some painters use, because they, a lot of people, they don't want to open up the, 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 the crack before the ready. So if you can get some of the paste into the crack, that will grab on really well. So what I'll do is I'll mix up another batch. So I'll mix up a little bit looser, and then I'll take my red rubber float here. Remember, this is, this is wet, I'm shaking off the excess water, get a little bit of the pasty material, and work it into the crack. So I'm going to get, get, get that paste into the crack. That way it can grab onto both sides of the crack and give it a good bond. So work it into the crack, make sure you get that paste down into the crack. And then finish it off lightly. Circular motion, bring out the sand. Just real gentle. Um, if you do it this way, you tend to put a lot of pressure on, so this forces you to be light. Just like that, blend it out, and then wait two hours and then paint. Let's talk about some other textures. Uh, down below here, I have some different textures you might see out there in the field. This is a dash coat done with a machine. So let me show you how to do that, if that's what you have on your building. Uh, first step is I fill the hole or the, or the crack. And now I've given the, the rough finish real quick on a nice stiff deck brush, like this guy here. So nice stiff bristles on it. And then take it, and you should wear gloves unless you're sure that, that you're, you're not allergic to the paint. So always wear gloves until you're sure it's not, you're not allergic to it. And then just take it and uh, about six to eight inches away, just gently splatter it on. Now if the texture is thicker, or larger, mixed up thicker, and smaller, mixed up a little bit thinner, and remember you're just trying to match the surrounding texture. You have to do the whole building. And when they hit the building, they use a gut. So this is this. We're just matching what's already been done on the building. Sometimes you'll see they'll have a texture like this, but it's knocked down. So if, it, if it's a knockdown, I'll wait five minutes for the stuff I, I splattered on to set up. And I just wet my uh, wet my trowel. And then real gently just knock this down. Does that look like what you have in your building? It looks perfect to me. And then wait two hours and then paint. Now remember, if you're not happy the way it looks, maybe a 20 minutes worth of time with this. But just scrape it up and start over again. So it's not a big deal. If it doesn't look right, scrape it up, start over again, 20 minutes worth of time. Again, that's that seven minutes. Let's find another texture. Here we have a uh, skin trowel or Spanish lace. It has different names depending on what part of the country you're in. And then just skip it on. Remember we have a blue in here, so it's nice and sticky. You just match with the party on the wall there. So you look around the surrounding wall and see what it looks like. You're just matching that. If they do things big, do it large. If they do small, just do it really small. And again, if you're not happy the way it looks, start again. You got 20 minutes to work with it. So, right. Also, I recommend uh, starting on the back of the building and then work your way out to the front because that way you do really good by the time you get to the front. Or go to a friend's house, practice on your friend's house, and then go ahead and do a work on the job site. Sometimes uh, the flash work, 
the building, we'll use a number two sand. That's a finer sand. It looks like this, this right here, a finer sand. So what I'll do if that's what's on the building, I'll do the, you know, fill in the hole, squeeze it off flat. But instead of using a wet rubber float, I tend to use a real porous sponge float, a real porous. And they come in different colors. So, so what I find is this sponge tends to take the sand off. I'll just brush the sand off to get the, leave the finer sand behind. And again, I keep brushing until it matches the sand that's existing on the wall there. Just brush off the sand. And then wait two hours and then paint. Easy. Smooth stuck up, um, just take a putty knife. If it has texture, just kind of wave it around. Red float, and I'll do large where you see the sand. So, pretty much. Pretty much with a couple tools like these, you can match almost any texture out there in the market. So a couple tools like this, a little bit of finessing, and with the rapid set, you can uh, two hours be at the painting stage. 